folks, I'm Jesse Elaine, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tunes by the Doobie Brothers. Um, I know it's controversial for you real Doobies fans because you probably prefer the pre-Michael McDonald Doobie Brothers, which are very different than the Michael McDonald era Doobie Brothers, but that's for another discussion. Um, today the song is Taking It to the Streets which uh, obviously features Michael McDonald on vocals. If you've ever heard the song, you know that. He's one of the greatest vocalists of the era. But what we're looking at are the chords. Uh, before I made this video, you know, I've been playing the, the tune, and I looked around on YouTube, and I didn't see any other videos where any guitar players were playing the piano part on the guitar. So... This is my interpretation of the piano part, which is kind of two parts. Um, if you think about a piano player, they have a left hand that they can use for bass notes or arpeggiated chord tones. Then they have a right hand that they can use for melody or higher chord tones or intervals. So what I did here is I took some creative liberties with the bass line just because it's very hard to play exactly what the, the bass player in the tune plays. There's a little bit of overlap between what the piano plays, which are actually some octaves in the, in the low register, um, and then actually has some uh, really interesting chord shapes above it. So the tune's in the key of C. Um, you wouldn't really know it on first examination unless you understand what's going on. So from the music theory perspective, it's a lot of tension, really. That whole first section, the beginning of the song, and if you haven't listened to the song, listen to it many, many times. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, so the whole beginning part with the verse and the, uh, the, the pre-chorus, they're all kind of like build-ups to the eventual goal, which is the one chord, which is actually a C. And it takes a while for them to get there, but that's part of the effectiveness of the song is that they don't jump right into that C chord, which is what you'd expect, you know, like a 1-4-5. It's mostly like 5 chord, pretty much the whole first minute almost of the tune. Um, and then you get some other stuff going on there too, some stuff we don't even need to talk about. But I'll show you what I'm doing here. And I just, I'm just i just copying exactly what the, the keyboards play. There's piano and there's some kind of electronic uh, or electric piano sound going on. But anyway, this, this one requires a lot of stretching, so if you can't do bar chords yet, this is probably going to be a little bit over what you're capable of. So maybe just try to do like the top voice chords, like the, just the top three notes if you, if you still want to play along. Um, you might have to refinger some things, but the way I'm going to show you has the big stretches in it. So we'll get started. So everything in this verse section is going to be with a G bass. So we call a pedal tone. I'm just going to keep kind of repeating underneath. And um, if our tempo is one, two, three, four, it might be a little faster than that in real life, but your thumb is going to play this G on the sixth fret, sorry, sixth string, third fret. And then your top chord actually is a couple ways you could analyze it. You could analyze it like an F minor 6. So F, A flat, D, and then another F. But we're taking the top of that, we're doing A flat, D, F. So really you could say it's like a G7 flat 9. Or you could say it's an F minor 6 over G. Um, I'll call it a G7 flat 9. But anyway... Uh, that's the first shape. And then what happens after that is... So... So we get this G7 flat 9. Then we keep our third finger down. So this third finger is going to stay on the 6th fret 2nd string. Now anytime you have a chord where there are, there's a finger in common with the next chord, you should keep that finger down because it's a lot less work than having to pick up that finger again just to put it down in the same place. I see a lot of people doing that. Don't waste your effort or time doing that. It might take a little while to gain the finger independence where you can leave fingers down but shift other fingers around. 
And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going from this uh, G7 flat 9 chord, and then I'm switching to an F major shape. So we get our A flat, D, F. Now I'm going to change it to A with my pinky on the seventh fret of the fourth string, and then C with my second finger on the fifth fret of the third string, while still keeping my third finger on the sixth fret, second string, F. So this is a really quick change. This is probably one of the tougher parts. That's it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's a very short time. Then we go down to a C triad, G, C, E, all on the fifth fret with second finger on the fourth string, fifth fret, third finger on the third string, fifth fret, and fourth finger on the second string, fifth fret. So here we go. That's actually our one chord, technically it's a one, six, four, it's an inverted one chord. It's over that G. And then what we do is we keep our third finger down, again a common tone. And then what I'm going to do here, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to bar down with my first finger so that I can make sure at least the third fret of the second string is being barred by my third finger, which is already on the G third fret sixth string. So before I'm just kind of holding it loose. See this little, this is some space in between. I'm just holding this sixth string down, I'm not barring. Until I get to here, you'll see it. So if you can, I'll show you from this angle. So watch watch this space right in here. Three, four. Barring down. Barring down. Okay, so that's how that dynamic works there. At least the mechanics, I shouldn't say dynamic. Totally different. Um, anyway, so back to here. So we're here. And then we're going to lower. And all I'm doing, I'm, I'm just picking up the pinky. So now this bar is taken over with a D. And then the second finger, all that's going to do is just slide down one fret. I'm going to have to pick it up. Again, use less effort. Don't make harder for yourself. Um, so we're here. Picked up the pinky, left the third finger down, and dropped the second finger down to the fourth fret. This makes for a D7 over G, if that makes any sense. And then all we're going to do now is just drop that second finger out of there. So this is in order slowly, three, four. Doing a hammer on G A G that breaks up the steady G bass going on just a little bit. Makes it sound like there's two instruments playing. That's what we're emulating, right? Again, only use that bar here and here. That last chord is a G suspended over a G. So uh, don't worry about that, no problem. Um, so what we did there is we just picked up that second finger and then that F sharp just lowers down to an F. Now without getting too technical, I just want to show you something, point this out. If you just look at the chords, A flat in the bass, A in the bass, G in the bass on just the chords, not the bass note. F sharp in the bass, F in the bass. Just picking out that. Even if you know basic music theory, you know that's a good example of chromatic movement. Great voice leading in this. Notice how when we look at the chords, very little movement is done in the voices. Just usually by half steps, you know, it's really not very much, maybe a whole step, a whole step at the most. So this is the thing 
And I don't want to criticize any other people who are showing guitar videos of this out there, but when you're doing a guitar version, I understand that, but you have to be mindful of what the piano does. And to really get the essence of what's going on in the song, to do it properly, this is what needs to be done. You need to follow that voice leading. Um, again, not trying to criticize, I'm just saying that's my perspective. That's why I'm making this video so you can understand the voice leading part of it. It's not easy, it's harder to do. Um, but it's worth the effort because it gives you a sound that is not typically achieved on guitar. As you can see, it's a pain to do. So obviously most people aren't going to go for those kind of chords if they don't have to. But if you really want that sound, this is what you're going to do. Okay, so that's the verse. This is what I would call the pre-chorus. Now this one's got some of the biggest stretches, but it's really not that bad. If you get long enough fingers, you'll, you'll be able to do it. If you don't, it'll be more tough, but uh, I don't know. That's, it is what it is. So this is this is on a one chord. This is a C. It's a weird looking C, isn't it? Well, we're barring the uh, fourth string, third string, and second string at the fifth fret. Just barring that, not doing a full bar or anything crazy. Just really focusing on those. I'm kind of bending the finger a little bit. See that? Okay. That's how I'm getting that. And then the pinky over here on the 6th string, 8th fret. And this is a quick one, kind of staccato. This is the big stretch. And I suppose you could go across like that. So, But it kind of wants to lead you to a different chord that's not really correct. So I do this one. So we got a C chord, and then we stretch to a G on the 6th fret, and then up to that C again. And then this leads us nicely down to the B flat with our second finger on the 6th fret 6th string. And then we still get the C triad here, and that's the beauty of that chord, is that bass line going down while that chord stays the same on top. So again, 3, 4. Let me do a G and a B flat. Then this is an F inverted chord, so it's got an A in the bass. So this is second finger, fifth fret, sixth string. Uh, first finger, third fret, fourth string. Third finger, fifth fret, third string. And fourth finger, sixth fret, second string. So. that too actually depending on how you want to do it but I'll show you that chord so you get that and then you got G A bass notes so third fret fifth fret sixth string and then this is like an A flat six chord uh, so we get A flat on the fourth fret of the sixth string octave of that A flat on the sixth fret of the fourth string then we get a C on the uh, fifth fret of the third string with our second finger. And then with our fourth finger, we've got an F on the sixth fret of the second string. So. And then we're going to go either to a G, I'm sorry, an F over G, or if you want to put a G up in the top of that, you could alternate too. So this chord is either done with the third finger on the third fret of the sixth string followed by an F major chord shape, but instead of using your third finger there like we usually do, we're going to use our fourth finger and then our second finger and then bar with our first finger. So we'd have, I'll do it one way first. And then this is with the G on the top. Skip one. Um, so you could do it like that too. So this would be like the F major chord, regular style, cowboy style, and then uh, putting the G in the top, not barring with the first finger normally, putting a G in the top and then using the thumb for the bass. So you get a G double octave, double octave because it spans the, there's one octave, there's two, so you get the low and then the high one there. So. sound like and 
then on the last one you can do sometimes I'll do that this is like a G suspended so G barring all six and then uh, we get our third finger fifth fret fourth string on G fourth finger fifth fret third string on C and then first finger is still barring you can you can do the high G if you want this is all finger style again so I'm just all finger on this because you need some some dexterity going so play that whole part sound there okay and then finally the chorus now the chorus is really neat it's very chromatic um, uses some um, regular root position and then some inverted chords so it starts off with a C7 chord which is going to be done like this going to be first finger I'm sorry second finger fourth string second fret third finger third string third fret first finger, second string, first fret, and then open E. So you get E, E, B flat, C. So basically it's like a C7 without the C as a bass. And you'll see why. Next one is going to be an F major. And I'm doing it with the thumb. You'll see why in a second. So it's just F major in the top, and then F in the bass with the thumb. And you'll see why I'm doing this. This is the next chord. It's F minor 7, so E flat, A flat, C. So this is barring the first fret of the fourth, third, and second strings, and then putting an F sharp in the bass. So we get. Okay, so one more time. We've done that, right? We've done. And then. This is a C chord with the G in the bass. That's the last one. So, second finger, second fret, fourth string is an E. And then we got our open third string G. Then we got our first fret, second string C. Okay, and then we play a G in the bass. So, what we did, that's our bass line. Again, all chromatic. Taking it to the streets, or taking it to the streets. You can hear the harmony, right? So, it's already built in, right? Because you're going. Uh, so listen to what that sounds like. That's why this is a powerful chorus. But the way I do it, the first time I do it on the video before, like I did, I'm playing just the second string as my highest note, I'm using my third finger there on the second string. So it sounds like this. So you hear those inside voices. Next time I do this. So different, slightly different. This one's the same. That first chord, the C7 over E, is the same except I'm playing that high E note. And then this chord's the same, but I'm emphasizing that high F note on the first string. All these notes I'm talking about now are on the first string. And then this chord, this one you got to add the F sharp, so it's a double octave. Add the F sharp on the second fret first string, and then when you get to this G uh, C over G chord, you're gonna add the G up on top, another double octave. Actually, they're all double octaves now. That I think about it, another double octave on the uh, third fret of the first string. So here's what it sounds like. I just go back and forth, inside voices for the first one, top voice for the second one, inside voice for the third one, top voice for the fourth one. So three, four, two, three, four. See how it brings the melody in a different way? That's just my own interpretation. And yes, you do have to get back to that chord pretty fast. And it's a little faster. It's like one, two, three, four.
you gotta be ready to do it. Use a metronome, work up your speed. So I think you get the idea. Uh, again, it's all about practice, um, but I really think if you take some time, listen to the tune, because anything that we do on guitar for this tune, when we're trying to play those chords, is not really gonna be as effective and impactful as the original. I hate to tell you that, but that's really the moral of the story. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it as close to that as you can. Um, that's the nature of a transcription, and yeah, I might not have physically transcribed or written it up, but when you're changing instrumentation and you, you're hearing in your head what the original one was, it's never going to quite satisfy your ear like the original, but it's still really fun to play, and it's uh, a good version, I think. Um, and there's a saxophone solo in there. It's a lot of instruments. The Doobie Brothers are kind of known for that. So you're not going to be able to cover every part, uh, most likely, in my experience, I, I don't think it's humanly possible on one guitar. But you can do a good job of covering a lot of the really important elements. And that's that's kind of what transcribing is about, without getting too far into transcribing. But uh, again, listen to the song a lot, practice it a lot. And if you have any questions, let me know. But until next time, have fun. <laughs>